Okay, good day, folks. Welcome back to Parents Training. Now, one of the biggest questions I keep getting asked by a lot of customers, uh, there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding, is at what point do you need a license for a CV? So, a vehicle loading crane, commonly known as a HIAB or a FASI or that sort of thing. Now, it's quite simple, really. So, what you've got to do is look at the load charts on the um, crane. And when we look at the load charts here, so for instance, this load chart here says at 2.6 meters, I can lift seven ton. Now all you need to do anywhere along this load chart, multiply that one by the other one, 2.6 times seven, right, it's gonna come out to more than 10. All right, if it comes under 10, then you don't require a license. If it comes to greater than 10, you're gonna need a license. So anywhere along this load chart, so for example here, if at six meters, I can lift 2890, six times 2.89 is once again more than 10. Now, if you multiply these two along here and it didn't come to more than 10, that means that crane is under 10 ton meters, which means you don't need a license. But in saying that, if anywhere along here, if you can multiply them and it comes to more than 10, then you require the CV license for it. Now I do understand in Victoria especially, there's not a lot of people doing the CV licenses. Um, so if you're having difficulties finding someone to do the CV, okay, the C2 also covers it as does any other slewing crane ticket. So any slewing crane ticket, C2, C6, C1, CO, do all cover the CV as well. Keep in mind however, if you get a CN license, that doesn't cover a slewing crane. Okay, so that's your CV license. If it's more than 10 ton meters, you require a high risk license. Under 10 ton meters, you still need to be competent. So however your employer deems you as competent, okay, that is the employer's prerogative. He may um, give you a VOC himself, he may get an outsider in to do it for you, or he may again just send you off to get the license regardless. So 10 ton meters requires a license, underneath need to be competent. Now, working our way up the licenses, you've got your CN. So a CN license or a non-slew crane license is to operate any non-slew crane greater than three ton. So if the crane is at three ton or under, so if you have a three ton tally handler, it doesn't require a license. Once again, still must be competent. Anything above three tonnes, so 3,001 kilos, you require a minimum of a high risk work licence for it. The CN is covered above, uh, covered by all the licences above it, so C2, C6, C1, CO are all going to cover the CN as well. Moving on, after the CN, we go to the C2, which is a mobile saloon crane up to 20 tonne. So any mobile slewing crane, regardless of capacity, even if it's a little 1500 kilo um, mater, okay, still requires a slew crane ticket. So anything up to and including 20 tonne is a minimum requirement of a C2 license. Go above that 20 tonne mark, that's when we start moving to the C6 license. So the C6 license will cover any slewing crane up until 60 tonne. Following on to, from that, we have the C1. Uh, the C1 is any slung crane up to 100 ton, and after that we have the CO, which is your open crane license. Now, these licenses cover all mobile slewing cranes. Keep in mind they don't cover a tower crane. So a CT is license required to operate a tower crane. Okay, so I hope that clears up a few bits and pieces for you. Now, keep in mind that you there is no requirement to get them all in order. However, I would always suggest personally to start off with a CN as a minimum, then move on to C6, and then from there, most people typically skip C1 and go to CO. So, and that's the way I personally did it. I had my CV, my CN, then I got my C6, and then I moved on to CO. Take it as a long-term goal, there's no rush, all right, you're better off learning as you go through. All right, if you do have any questions or queries on it, particularly on that CV, because we do get a lot of phone calls from people that don't quite understand. So once again, just to recap, 
anywhere along here if you multiply your radius so that's one here on top that's your radius in meters uh, and you multiply that by the capacity if anywhere along here you might, can multiply the two together and it comes to greater than 10 ton then you are going to require a license to operate it all right so thanks for your time don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends as well okay thank you